Hello everyone and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to set up and create a basic video project in Adobe Premiere Elements 11. Adobe Premiere Elements 11 is the latest version of Adobe Premiere Elements which is their kind of basic, you know, easy consumer level version of their professional video, video editing software, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is one I use for my YouTube videos and things like that. Software is really easy to use and you know, really dumbed down and simple so that it doesn't take a whole lot to create a basic video project. So make sure you open it up and when your program first opens, it's probably going to give you a welcome screen with an option to open their organizer or the video editor or something else. And their organizers and their Adobe Bridge and things like that really aren't that useful for basic projects. So what you're going to want to do is select the little gear icon for the settings in the top right corner of that window and actually tell it to automatically go to the video editor from then on. Now when your program opens it's going to have the quick version which is just the very very basic video editor. For doing anything beyond just throwing a single clip in and editing you're going to want to choose the expert option. It, it's not really that advanced especially compared to their Premiere Pro software but it gives you quite a bit more options to work with and you're going to need that if you're using multiple clips and graphics and multiple audio clips and things like that. So I highly suggest you choose that. Next you're going to click the little project assets drop down box, find your videos. I have some clips from a memory card for my school newspaper that I had copied over so we're just going to choose a clip at random here, doesn't really matter what you choose, and drag it into the project assets file or little box there. Now you should already have your clips pretty much, unless you have like extra graphics saved in separate locations, you should already have your clips organized and together. That way you know what you're working with. Now you could also choose add media and capture it from another source or browse that way. That really makes it confusing for me. I always prefer having Explorer open and dragging and dropping. That way I have full control and understanding of what files I'm actually bringing into the project here. Now again, obviously, the clips aren't going to be relevant to each other or for anything specific. This is just for an example. Now obviously, to get your project started, you're going to want to choose a clip that you want to start with and drag it onto your timeline, which is that lower half there that, you know, it has the time of the video duration and it's a line. So it's a timeline. Now this first clip here is only three seconds. We're not really going to work with that. So this other one here is about 40 seconds, so we can probably use that one. You have different tracks lined up here. So you have three video tracks and three audio tracks to go with those video tracks. And then you have specialty narration and soundtrack tracks. Now these audio tracks are set up so you can, if you have narration, narration in your video, you can put that specifically in that designated track and then balance the audio accordingly and know at all times which audio file is your narration. You don't have to use it that way and the same goes for soundtrack. And you can use them for other things it's just since this is designed to be a very easy to use program, it's, you know, it's giving you those track options to make it a bit easier. So you can say, hey, where do I put my narration? You put it right there. And that makes it a lot easier to use. Now, a couple things you're going to want to have open when you're working with your project is your project assets thing, which for whatever reason won't, will not say open by default. You want to have that visible at all times if possible. <laughs> And then you're going to want your audio meters window open up here. If I can pull it up. Adobe Elements, or Adobe Premiere Elements works quite a bit differently than Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, you can act, it's all modular and you can actually bind things to different places and completely change your workspace. And this just kind of gives you goofy little windows. So this is your audio meters. You can use that to monitor and adjust your audio levels accordingly. And you're going to want to pretty much have that up in all times for most video projects. That way you know what is making what level of audio. And that should be pretty much all that you want open for this, you know, for this kind of basic video project. Now you can also change it to a dual monitor workspace, but it's not really recommended. I have two monitors and I tried it and it's pointless. All it does is move the timeline to a secondary, to your secondary monitor. And that's not really at all useful, so I wouldn't worry about that much at all. But make sure you have your audio mixer up and try to keep your project assets up at all times and you're good to go. 
let's drag our clip onto here and see what we have. Again, I'm not really choosing anything specific, so I don't really know what these clips are. This would appear to be B-roll of, looks like a cop just standing behind a table. Looks like for a cookout or something, some sort of event on campus. So B-roll is not really going to be our main focus, so let me pull Explorer back up here. And let's get us just like a clip of somebody actually talking, like an interview. What is this? Okay, this is a clip of her talking, so we can use that. Drag that onto our file, and that is actually going to be our main clip here. So we're going to get rid of the B-roll, or we're actually going to move it up. All you have to do to move things around is drag and drop. Pretty straightforward. And we're going to drag the B-roll on top here, and then we're going to trim it up a little bit. Now, trimming is actually very, very simple. It seem, it's something that I've seen a lot of people not be able to figure out how to do and get really confused about, but it's actually very, very simple. In order to trim a clip, move your cursor to the end of the clip and it will change icons. For whatever reason, it's not showing in this video here, but it will actually change an icon to show a bracket and show that you're actually extending the clip and then you can shorten it or do whatever you want with it. If you accidentally trim it too short, you can extend it all the way back as far as the clip originally went, so that's pretty useful. And then we're just going to kind of put it in the middle here, although it's not really showing. She doesn't start talking at the beginning of the clip. So we're going to zoom in here on the timeline and trim it up to when she starts talking so we have only what we need. This little slider on the right is how you do that. Right next to render, it zooms in the timeline. And you're going to be using this quite a bit if you do a lot of little trimming and editing in your video. And it's a lot easier to do it on the timeline than to do it on individual clips, but some people prefer doing it on individual clips. I'm showing you how to do trimming on the timeline. So zoom in to where you can see the audio levels appropriately and stuff. As you can see, it, it lights up these little rectangles on there. Those are just the frames that it's rendered into the preview, so they'll play back faster so you can see where you have played previously. Nothing you really need to worry about. But so you can trim using how I just showed you with the bracket at the end of the clip, or when you put your scrub head in a certain place, it pops up these scissors icons this scissor icon which cuts the clip where you want it and then select the bit we don't want here at the start and just hit the delete key not the backspace but the delete key and it gets rid of it and automatically adjusts the video appropriately then we're going to just drag our b-row to kind of the middle of it trim it up a little bit and like that we have her talking and then it cuts the b-roll and then it cuts back to her and finishes off the video Quiet place to study or need a study break we've got some good spots for you to check out Pretty straightforward. And then we're gonna trim off the end a little bit there. And that is pretty much a basic video project. But you're gonna wanna add, in certain situations, you might wanna add text or a lower third or graphics or underlying natural sound or narration. Now to add text, they do have a titles and text set up here at the bottom. And you can use that to add in a bunch of goofy little things and they have a cool credits thing. But if you just add the regular text template, you can kind of add your own text and customize it from there. It doesn't give you a whole lot of control though. So what I would recommend you do is learn, get familiar with GIMP or Adobe Photoshop and create your own text in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm not going to go too into detail on that in this tutorial, but I'm going to briefly go over creating a template. You're going to want to create a new document that's the same size as your video. So our final video is going to be 1920 by 1080. Make sure your background is transparent. That way only the text shows up over top of the video, no white background. Then choose your text tool, pick a font, create some sort of message. I'm gonna use Probert just as an example so it's legible. We're gonna say blah, blah. We want it in the lower third of the screen so we're gonna drag it down here, hit enter. And then I'm gonna add a stroke and a drop shadow so it sticks out from the video, save it somewhere. And a cool thing since um, all of Adobe's software is connected and integrated and things like that. All you have to do is drag the Photoshop file as soon as I find it in Explorer here, there we go, onto your project assets and it imports it and reads it perfectly fine as it would in Photoshop. So we can just drag that from the assets box onto the timeline and it'll act just like the text that Elements created. And except it looks better because we have more control and more options in Photoshop. Now, the next thing you're going to want to worry about is audio balance. When you have a B-roll clip here, it's often going to have its own audio, its own background audio for the clip. 
And if you're doing, you know, if you're doing an interview and you want to show natural sound for the B-roll and you know what you're doing, that's perfectly fine. But in a lot of cases, like with this clip of her talking into the microphone, there is already quite a bit of background noise on that clip. And if you have too much background noise on both clips interfering, it can honestly sound like a garbage mess in the background instead of smooth, natural sound background noise that you want. So instead, uh, if you expand your clip on the track, you can kind of see the audio levels below on the, on the audio portion of the B-roll here. You can see the audio levels. Obviously, this one doesn't have that loud of a background audio, so we probably won't worry about it too much. But I'm really picky, and so you want to make sure. Now, what you do for this, if you don't want to use the audio, is you can either mute it or delete it in a couple different ways. If you click the speaker icon here on the track itself, you can just flat out mute it. This is probably the, be the best option, but you can also right-click the clip and just delete the audio entirely. Now, if you just really, really don't want the audio, you can do that. However, I don't really recommend it because that's a bit more rigid, you don't have flexibility to bring it back if you want later. I would just recommend muting it, and then if you want to add it back in or adjust it later, you still have that option. But that's also good for deleting video off of clips and taking the audio or just taking specific video that you never want the sound for and just getting rid of the audio. Also this yellow bar here you can slide up and down and go to negative infinity to mute the track and works out just the same. So you have a few different ways to mute it and then you can test the audio levels with your audio meter and see where everything is at. So then, now that we have our video project ready to go we have text on the screen, we've got b-roll, we've got audio managed, you know, on a very low level, then we're pretty much ready to go. There's a whole bunch of things you could do, but for what we're doing, that works out. To save your video, make sure your project is saved, and that is one thing I forgot to mention before. Uh, tutorial 1 test. Make sure you save the actual project file. Unlike, I believe, older versions of Adobe Premiere Elements or, um, Unlike Adobe Premiere Pro, it doesn't create the file that you save to when you initially create a project. So if you close it on accident, if it crashes, if something happens, there's not really autosaves to build off of if something happens. So you will lose all your projects. So you always want to make sure you save a specific file as soon as you start and get files in there and continue saving as you edit to make sure you have everything that you do. But when you're ready to edit, Go to the publish and share button on the top right here and go and then choose your option. There's specific there there's a bunch of options and then if you click the online one it'll download some presets for you. But you want to make sure that you're you know creating a file that is best for your format. Now we are actually making a YouTube video and so we will want to choose High definition video for YouTube 1920 by 1080. It's going to be about 9, it says it's going to be 9.92 megabyte per 10 second. Uh, Adobe Premiere Elements does not give you a lot of control over your bitrate or resolution, but that should work out for us. Then we click next because this is a 1080p video, 16 by 9 as you see. However, one setback to note is if you choose the online option, it's actually going to expect you to upload to YouTube. If you're creating this video and uploading directly to YouTube, then this is probably pretty great for you. I don't necessarily agree with these bitrate options for YouTube, but that is what it's giving you. However, if you're as the target for most of these tutorials, if you're going to be uploading later or something like that, then you're going to want to do computer. And this doesn't give you the best options for actually uploading to YouTube, but you can make them work. What you're going to want to choose is an F4V file, which is basically a flash file, which is very similar to the files we'd be uploading to YouTube, and choose either 720 or 1080. I'm choosing 1080 because that's the highest um, resolution of the clips. Give it a name, tell it where you want to save it. I'm saving it to this RAID hard drive here. You can choose advanced and you can give comments, and then you can change your bitrate and resolution here. So, frame rate, you want to always make sure you're exporting at 29.97 frames per second. That is extremely important for web video, always 29.97, unless you're doing film or cinematic style of video, then it would be 24, but for this kind of stuff, 29.97. Make sure you have either 1280 by 720 or 1920 by 1080 here. 
29.97 or 30 works fine. Make sure you're on progressive field order, always. Always progressive. Profile high. Level doesn't really matter for what you're doing. And then come down here. Here is your bitrate options. You're going to want to choose variable bitrate, bit custom, and then for 1280 by 720 video, you'd be doing, say, five, uh, yeah, 5 as your target, 5 megabytes per second, and 8 as the maximum. But since we're doing 1080p video, your target's actually going to be, for my videos it's a bit higher, but for this I'll say about 10 with a maximum of 14 megabytes per second gonna be a pretty big file and take a little while to encode but it will look very good keyframe distance and stuff you can leave the same the format tab you will be leaving the same there's not really options and then for your audio bitrate all that is fine but you want to make sure this is set as high as possible unfortunately actually if you go to AAC instead of AAC plus version 2 drag it down to 256 256 kilobytes per second is perfect for web streaming and then I actually suggest you Add a little comment here for your preset. We'll just name it YouTube Tutorial 1. And then hit OK. We're going to name the preset YouTube Tutorial 1. That way, when you come back to it later, it will give you the option to choose that so you don't have to set this up every single time. That will save you a lot of time and a lot of energy and make this process go much faster than it is currently. Then when you're ready, just hit save. It's going to take some time and render out your media. Since this is a about an 8 second clip, it's not going to take that long. And then you have a video ready to go. After enough time has passed, your video will be saved. You can click done, continue editing or managing projects as you wish, or go find your video and double check that it works. Mine was saved here, untitled2.f4v. Welcome back, Grenadiers, to a new school year. If you ever get hungry, need a quiet place to study, or need a study break, we've got some good spots for you to check out. And bam, it works. And then you can upload it to YouTube, and you are good to go. And that's pretty much it. Obviously, you'll want to name it something <laughs> logical to your project, not just untitled. You always want to stay on top of your file names and stuff, but that's basically it. So that's basically it for my tutorial of a basic video project in Adobe Premiere Elements. If you want to see more tutorials for Adobe software at all, let me know in the comment section below what I can come up with, and I will do my best to create some decent tutorials. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Sideways walking fool, you are dead, yes you are dead. Sideways walking fool, sideways walking fool, sideways walking fool, you are dead, yes you